First of all, I, I'd like to thank the bowl people. Uh, I mean, we are in at home, but uh, we we treat it like we're not at home. And the way we're treated by this this bowl, uh, we've been lucky enough to be in several bowls, and the way we're treated by this bowl is is beyond way we get treated at other bowls. And we've had a great time. Uh, I, I think that uh, Coach Neil Matalolo and I are of the same opinion, it's time to play a football game. Uh, we have great respect for his team. I, I, I really believe this, and, and we, have, we don't know each other very well, but we've hung out a little bit here lately, and, and I think we believe in the same things. Uh, we believe that football teams are supposed to be tough. Football teams are supposed to play hard from start to finish, and you see how it comes out. In, in my opinion, it's one of those, one of those games that uh, I don't know which team I'm for, because <laughs> uh, we have great we have great respect for what their kids are all about, what they stand for, uh, the kind of people they are, and we appreciate them, and we believe in them, and and we thank them for what they do. Uh, that doesn't mean tomorrow when we go out and play, you know. He uh, Ken comes up here. He's a nice guy. They're going to try to beat the heck out of us. They're going to try to beat us into submission, take our will away from us. And I'm glad that their guys are like that. Because if they're not like that, they don't do the job that we expect them to do once they get out of college. OK? And so we have great respect for what they do and how they play. And I'm sick and tired of hearing about our success against the wishbone. Those teams, those option teams we've been playing are not the wishbone. I've been saying that for three weeks, and no one wants to listen. Uh, Ken is the expert on running the wishbone offense. And the way they run it is a little old school, but the way they run it is the best offense that's ever been designed. So if you don't do things exactly the right way, they will run up and down the field and beat your head in. And he's got the kids to do it. Now, I've been waiting to tell this story. And him and I talked about it the other day. I was with a team that had the opportunity to play Navy in the Emerald Bowl in San Francisco. Uh, Coach Nia Matalolo was the offensive coordinator. We had the ball fourth and one with about two minutes left to go in the third quarter to come within five points of the lead. We went for it and got stopped. Navy took the ball over on about the six inch line, ran 26 plays, went 94 yards, kept the ball for 14 minutes and 42 seconds, and kicked the field goal. They got the ball with two minutes, a little over two minutes left to go in the third quarter. We got it back with a little over a minute to go in the fourth quarter. So that baloney that we know what we're doing to stop this offense, he's the expert and he made us believe in that offense. Now, our, I think our players are excited about playing, but at the same time, we have the kind of respect for what he does and his team does and what they stand for that, nah, don't get me wrong, we're going to go out there and try to beat them up. But guess what? They're going to try to beat us up. Because we believe we have great kids that have that kind of respect. He has great kids that has that kind of respect. It'll be a great football game. And whoever wins, I'll be happy either way. I'm ready for questions. Yep. Coach. Uh when you see Keenan Reynolds, obviously a, a fantastic runner, but also can throw the ball very, very well, does that kind of change how you look at preparing for a triple option with a quarterback who can throw it as well as he can run it? See, we, we got some more similarities here. Uh, we think we run the ball really well. And DJ Pumphrey, we hand him the ball, and he runs the ball and runs the ball. And if you put enough guys in the box to stop the run or slow the run down, you got a chance of play action pass to go over the top and beat you. Well, guess what? What they do is run the ball very well. Keenan uh, operates that option as well as you can. He reads it as well as you can. 
And so guess what you have to do? You have to get guys closer and closer to the line of scrimmage. You got to get safeties up involved in supporting the run and then play action pass. They throw it over the top of you and it's a touchdown. We don't run the same offense. We have the same philosophies. So it's, it's a, I, I guess that's interesting. It's not for me as I've been watching that film the last few days. I'm not, I'm not very interested anymore. Rocky with Toledo coaching his last game. Are we going to see some different stuff from Bob for this last one besides DJ running up the middle all the time? <laughs> yeah. It is his last game, and I'm a little nervous that he won't stay with the regular game plan. <laughs> and our only chance to win is if he stays with the regular game plan. Uh, let, let's don't get too far from the truth here, too. Now, there, there will be a trick play or two that we've practiced and they have practiced. I mean, uh, when you're in a bowl game, you go through and watch every single game during the season. Guess what? They run, they run uh, pitch it and halfback passes. They run double reverse passes. They run, and I know which guy throws it most of the time, but uh, they, they run a reverse to the wide receiver and he throws it back to the quarterback. You, you can practice against every one of those. We didn't practice against any of them. Because now you get your kids locked into a trick play, and they're looking for one trick play, and the other one's going to work for sure. So if a trick play in this game works, it's great execution by the offense. Or it's not aggressive enough by the defense. And just to follow up on your offense, um, do you believe that Quinn's probably is healthy? That he, he would, he would hope he would be with this time off and maybe able to do a little bit more than Quinn would? Uh, he's probably as healthy as he's been since he injured his shoulder. I mean, his shoulder still bothers him. But obviously, he's had three weeks to feel better. So his shoulder's not quite as sore. And, and he's been throwing a little bit more in practice. So hopefully, he'll be more accurate during the game. Uh, Coach, with all the spread offenses now and all the passing, is it kind of refreshing to see a team that runs the ball and runs a wishbone just good old-fashioned football? Uh, is it refreshing? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when you uh, let's see, we played 12 games. Uh, 10 of the 12, we played against pseudo spread teams. Some of them do a little of both, but they, they basically have a spread philosophy. And then two of the teams we played were triple option teams. Now I'm going to say it one more time. It was not the wishbone. Okay, but two of the teams were triple option teams. So when you practice against spread, pseudo spread teams or spread teams for 10 weeks and only get to practice against option teams for two games, you'd much rather play a spread because your players are more comfortable, they're more used to it. They, uh, we can call a lot fancier defenses. We can overload, we can blitz, we can juke and jive and try to confuse them with coverages. Uh, what Navy does does not allow you to juke and jive and blitz and stunt and overload one side or the other. And the number of coverages you play uh, is one or two because they're so disciplined and executed so well, if you're not in the right place all the time, it ends up big place. And then if you are in the right place, you get one of those 26 play drives for 94 yards because they're, they're so patient that they'll get three and they'll get two and then they'll get three and it's fourth and two and they go for it and it's a first down and then they get three and they get six and they, so if you allow the big play to happen, then you get beat up bad. Hey, Coach, I know it's not your job to watch the other side of the ball necessarily, but can, as a defensive guy, can you talk a little bit about what Coach Buddy Green does with the Navy defense? It kind of complements what Navy does offensively. They're going to make you drive the field, won't give up the big play, that type of stuff. I'm sure you've seen enough on film to know generally what they do. I appreciate you asking because I like to talk about defense a lot more than offense. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they do an outstanding job of playing fundamental football. They don't try to confuse you. They line up. Their players are fundamentally sound. They take on blocks with the right shoulder. 
they get rid of blocks. They can come off and make a play. They squeeze everything and try to keep everything in the middle. On the secondary, they try to keep everything in front of them and not give up a big play and count on you inching the ball down the field and you will eventually make a mistake. Uh, there's no doubt how well coached their defense is because to play really good defense and never try to confuse the other team is something special. That's old school too, by the way. And I think it goes right with their philosophy. They got good, tough kids. They're going to line up and try to beat your butt in. So I, I, I think it, what they do is unbelievable. Coach, how you doing? Omar Nelson, Navy Radio. Keep on the defensive side. I, I of the listened ball. to you on the radio the other day. You did a nice job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Except your prejudice, you know. There are, <laughs> there, there are two. There are two teams in this game. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a little bit of philosophy off uh, defensively facing this Navy attack because even though you've gone against it in the past, I think it's kind of evolved a little bit. Is it something you can talk about freely? Sure, sure. Uh, I, be, it offense? doesn't mean we can stop it. <laughs> okay. Because uh, well, the reason why, because a lot of people think, like you said multiple times, wishbone. But I think there's some things we do that's pretty good that coaches evolved a little bit. Just pretty good? <laughs> you, you said a lot more than that on the radio. Uh, no, no, that, that's a great question because people, people think when I say wishbone or triple option, they think they have one way to run the option. And, and you hear defensive guys, I think defensive guys make a huge mistake when they say, well, we've got to be disciplined. We've got to have a guy take the dive. We have to have a guy take the quarterback. And we have to have a guy go to the pitch. That's as simplistic as you can get, and it does not work. Because guess what? They have a veer option, which basically means they either – now I'm going to get a little technical here. Basically, they're going to read the guy outside the tackle or on the tackle, and if he squeezes – they don't block him. That tackle goes and blocks the linebacker, goes and gets a poor little ass safety, okay? And, and the quarterback reads the guy over the tackle, and if he doesn't close on the fullback, the fullback gets the ball and he hits his head on the goalpost. If that guy hits the fullback, then he moves out to the next guy and either keeps the goal, the quarterback keeps the ball and keeps him himself, or he pitches it to the pitch guy and he's got a blocker in front of him, okay? They don't have to block two guys. So they got huge advantages in numbers. It's the best offense ever designed. I'm, I'm serious. Okay, so now, now you got the veer option. Well, now you say, well, shoot, I'm, we're not going to let them run that. We're going to put a three technique in there. We're going to put a guy on the guard so they can't run the veer option. Okay, so now they run the midline option, which means the fullback's angle changes from to the, I don't know, outside foot of the guard to the outside foot of the center. Now they're reading the guy right next to the guard. And if that guy doesn't close, that guy hits the ball going straight ahead. The fastest way to the goal line is a straight line. That's the fastest way to the goal line. And the midline option goes right over the center. Okay? So now you have a different guy that's responsible for the dive. It's not the same guy anymore. It's a different guy responsible for the dive. Okay, so you do a good job on the midline option. You do a good job on the veer option. And guess what? They got what we call power option. Where the fullback goes one way, they pull a guard around the other way. The quarterback starts this way and goes back this way. And all of a sudden, the quarterback can carry the ball and follow the guard up the hole. Or you squeeze that down, and he jumps around that guy, and he's got the ball. And if not, he pitches it to that guy. And so it started one way, it goes back the other way. They even got an option where both halfbacks go one way, and the quarterback acts like he's going that way, and he comes back this way, and the fullback's the pitch guy. Okay, I can keep going because there's about six others. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know how to – I mean, I, I'm, giving cre I'm giving credit here because we know how to stop that. I have no idea how to stop it. I'm not lying. I have no idea how to stop. So, so what happens is we do what they do. We count on your players executing and running to the ball, and when they get knocked down, getting their butts back up and keep chasing the ball. So what, what it comes down to is that they execute an offense that is impossible to stop on the grease board. And now it's all about execution. Now, I, I'm going to say we know how to line up because the wishbone is based on numbers. And when you have numbers one way or the other, they can run opposite the numbers. If we outnumber them one way, they run the other way and they've got huge advantages. So we will line up right. But you will notice in the game, if you want to, want to know about the wishbone, I love talking about the wishbone. 
I was a wishbone quarterback. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want to look at what they do, you will see one halfback normally go in motion early. So when the ball is snapped, he is over the ball. So if your numbers are right, even if your numbers are right, now they have a half a man advantage because they got a guy over there faster than you can get a guy over there. Okay, so even though you line up correctly by their motion out of their halfbacks or tailbacks, what do you call them, halfbacks? A-backs. A-backs. They're A-backs. Their A-backs are in motion. They get a half a man or a full man advantage just by the early motion. And then if you start trying to run your safeties with that early motion, he starts that way, and then he comes back the other way, and then your safety's outnumbered anyway. So I'll give us credit. We will line up right. Does not mean that we won't give, out a number, give up a numbers advantage. So what it comes down to is both teams have to execute their offense, and on defense, both teams have to get in the right place, line up right, take on blocks, get rid of blockers, and chase the ball and see who does it the best. For a football purist, it's the best football game you've ever watched. It really is. For a football purist, it's, it'll be the best football game you'll ever see. I was nervous before I came out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell our, our offense in detail, not even on the head coach's defense coordinator. Like that. <laughs> It's fun talking football, though. I mean, I don't like this press stuff, but I like talking football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>